Monday in March, we are going to head into writing. And last week, we wrapped up, published, and shared our awesome brand new narrative writing. But today, because we're done, we're starting a brand new writing unit today. We're going to focus on a brand new kind of writing and learn how to expand our skills. So let's check out our learning target and learn what our new project is. It says, I can identify the three sections, three sections in a how to text, in a how to text. That is going to be our next unit, how to write. We are going to build our informational writing skills. That means our non-fiction writing skills. For narrative writing, we made up our own stories. Those were fiction. That's one part of writing. But how to writing is informational. We're going to be giving information that's non-fiction. They're facts. Something that's true for everyone. So the last time you wrote this non-fiction informational writing is when you wrote those paragraphs about the sea animals. That is when we wrote about facts, it was informational, and you were trying to teach someone. That's the same concept for how to write. In how to write in second grade, we teach how to do or make something. So we're gonna practice writing a guide directions of how to complete a goal how to do something or make something. So we're going to learn how to clearly explain to someone and teach them through multiple steps, a process, how to do or make something. So we're going all the way back up to the brainstorming stage of our writing process. We finished at the publishing of our narrative stage, but now we're in a brand new project so we have to go back to stage one and we're going to work with brainstorming. We're learning exactly what is how to text. We're looking at examples and thinking of ideas of how we could write our own how to text. So to look at an example, you are going to, from your packet you got, look at this page. It says shake it to make it. There's three sections and some pictures at the bottom. So this page within your packet, it should be stapled with other pages. Shake it till you make it. Resource page one. You are going to need this page out so you can have your own copy in front of you. So if you need to pause the video and grab it, that's totally okay. But we're ready with shake it to make it. Okay, super scholars, we can see right away the three different sections on our how to text. In order to have a really clear and understandable piece of writing for anyone to be able to follow, we need three clear sections so people can be prepared to follow along correctly. So let's look at this first section. Can you say ingredients? One more time. Ingredients. Good job. Let's see. What are ingredients? Let's look at the examples. Two tablespoons sugar, half teaspoon vanilla extract, one cup cream, half and half, one waffle cone. What exactly are ingredients? Based off this example, they are Let's look at the example. We've got 
gallon-sized plastic zipper bag, quart-sized plastic zipper bag, ice cubes, half cup kosher salt, mittens, ice cream scoop. What are materials based off this example? They're the tools you will need. So not food, but other tools you will need to put that food together in order to cook and make something. So materials are the tools that you need in order to make something. It can't come out of thin air. You need to start somewhere with a group of materials, tools that will all come together. So, so far we've got ingredients and materials. What's the third section of how to writing? It says steps. What does that say? Steps. What are the steps in how to writing? Let's take a look. One, fill the large bag half full of ice, add salt. Two, pour sugar, vanilla, and cream into the small bag. Zip the bag. Three, put the small bag inside the large bag. Zip the large bag. Four, go outdoors. Wear mittens or gloves to keep your hands warm. Shake the bag until the cream gets thick. It takes about five minutes. Five, scoop your ice cream into the cone and enjoy. My friends, what are steps? How would you define what those are? The steps in a how-to text, they... They break it down into parts. They tell you individual tasks that you need to do in order to make your final product, in this case, ice cream. And what do you notice about the steps, second grade? What do they have in front of them all? They have numbers. Numbers are super important when we're making steps because you need to go in a certain order to create something new. You have to start at the beginning and work your way through each step in order to create your final product. One, two, three, four, five. That makes it very clear to the reader what they need to do first, second, third, and so on. So it's easier for someone to follow and be successful in the end. Okay, so what were the three sections of our how-to text? We got ingredients, materials, and steps. Exactly. This is an awesome example of clearly seeing each part and a preview of what you are going to create at the end of this project. So my friends, we are going to practice learning from a how-to text right now. In order to figure out how we can be become a better writer, we're going to first practice reading a how-to text to see what it's like on the other side. So, what I need you to do right now is get out a piece of paper. A nice white piece of paper that's nice and blank. You're gonna fold it up. So it needs to be one that doesn't have anything on because you're gonna fold it up. If you need to go grab a piece of blank paper, you can do that right now. But we deserve an awesome break, of course. So come on, on this Monday, Let's look at our last, this, or that. Are you standing? Okay, up, up, up. So which one of these boats would you prefer to ride in? Do you prefer one of those swan boats where you like paddle in it? I've seen them like at Echo Park sometimes, the swan boats that you paddle. If so, you're gonna move side to side. Or would you prefer to go in a canoe where you have an oar and you have to move the boat with your hands? If so, you're going to go front to back. So do you like boats 
that you move with your feet, or a canoe that you have to move with your hands. What kind of boat would you prefer to ride it? I think I'd rather use my legs, so I'm going to move side to side for this swan boat. You got your choice? Here we go. And one, two, three, four, and five. Thank you, thank you. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Nice, calm bodies as we come right back down in our seats. But with this piece of paper, we are going to build a paper airplane. And we're going to follow these directions, this how-to test, in a book from Epic. We're going to need to follow these directions exactly. As we're following these directions, we're going to see what's awesome about this test, what makes it easy to follow, and what maybe is a little difficult that we want to change when we do our own writing. So this is going to be practice for us to see how it is being on the other side of directions. So can you go ahead and get that piece of paper out? It's nice and flat on your desk. So I'm going to be reading these directions exactly because this is all the information we have. And we're going to have to use these words to guide us in order to make a paper airplane. Okay. So look, we've got our numbers. Step number one. It says, fold the sheet of paper in half the long way. Now the paper should be shaped a little like a hot dog bun. Then open up the folded paper. Hold it like an open book. Okay. So fold the sheet of paper in half the long way. Now the paper should be shaped a little like a hot dog bun. Then open up the folded paper. Hold it like an open book. Okay, I'm following the same steps you are. Step number one. Let's do step number two. Fold one of the top corners in towards the center crease. Then fold the other top corner down to the center crease. So look, there's a picture for step number two. It says, fold one of the top corners in toward the center crease. Then fold the top corner down to the center crease. Okay, I'm following exactly what it says. Okay, we have our first two steps. Let's see about number three. Start at the point. Fold the angled edge of each side of the paper down towards the center crease. The inside edges should line up with the center crease. Okay, can we follow that? Start at the point. Here's a picture. Fold the angled edge of each side of the paper down towards the center crease. The inside edges should line up with the center crease. Okay, go ahead and do what you think that is based off the directions. I'm trying to figure it out too. I think I have it. I think this is correct. Okay, ready for number four? Step number four. Turn the plane over. Now fold the plane in half along the center crease. So turn the plane older, over. Now fold the plane in half along the center crease. Number 
we're just following exactly what these directions say and what we think they mean. Step number five, let's see. Fold the first wing down part way. The edge of the fold should end about one inch from the center. Hmm. Fold the first wing down part way. The edge of the fold should end about one inch from the center. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Remember, you're doing what you think it is. And here's an example, your picture for step number five. Okay, then step number six, repeat step five with the other wing. I kind of already did that together. So repeat what you did with step five to the other wing. And look, step number six. Does yours look similar to the picture? Mine kind of does. I think so a little bit. So we are now finished following along with this how to test. What do you think? Was that hard? Was that easy to follow along? We were only going off what the direction said. That's all the information we had. So now that we have a paper airplane, we made something, we followed these directions. I want you to reflect on how that experience was for you. Because being on the reader side is going to help you write better to make sure whoever reads it can very clearly follow your how-to text. So with your awesome paper airplane that you just made, I want you to share with me your paper plane experience on Dojo by reflecting and answering these two questions. So on Dojo Second Grade, you're going to take a video of yourself showing me your airplane and talking about what was easy to follow. What was easy about these directions? What made sense to you and let you follow along? What was easy about making this airplane? And second, what was difficult to follow about these directions? What made it challenging for you, a little bit harder? How was it difficult to follow? So on Class Dojo, you're gonna just share with me your experience of making that airplane. What was easy and what was difficult? For me, what was easy was the picture. I like seeing the pictures so I can have an example. But what was difficult was there were some vocabulary words that weren't defined, that they didn't talk about. So I was confused what they meant by some of those vocabulary words. But with my experience, what was yours? This will help us be more aware when we're writing our own text. Okay, awesome people. Thank you so much for making an awesome airplane with me. There's even more of that book on Epic if you want to go ahead, check it out, and make more airplanes. But for right now, go take your current one over to Dojo, talk about these questions with me, and I can't wait to see how this was for you.